All right, hi everyone. Happy Friday. Let's talk whiskey. Tiffany Chin here, LA Realtor. Welcome back to our Small Business Spotlight. As we know, small business owners of all kinds are being forced to get creative. So we at Tiffany Chin Real Estate are continuing our journey to do our part and help them to give back to the community that has been so good to us over the years. So we're featuring a different small business every Friday, and today we are shining the spotlight on Spirits of Whiskey with Carrie Moynihan. Did I yep. get that right? That's right. Okay, awesome. <laughs> we're going to talk um, to Carrie about her background and the business of whiskey pre and post COVID. So welcome to our show, Carrie, and thank you so much for making the time for us today. How are you doing? We're doing good. Thank you so much for, uh, you know, I mean, this is great. This is fun. Oh, of course. We're so happy to have you. And um, so, Carrie, tell us a little bit about yourself and the story behind how and why you started the business of whiskey and the origin story of your brand's name. Okay. Um, well, but that's actually, uh, Spirits of Whiskey is actually our podcast. And the company's name is First Real Entertainment. Mm -hmm. And I started First Real Entertainment, oh, God. 10 or so years ago to do independent filmmaking um, and television projects and um, earlier well past five years I've been working on various different whiskey shows um, trying to get um, I had a few options I had a couple that almost sold and then didn't or said, oh, want this so if you can just tweak it this and tweak it um, so we've had I think three or four different now uh, since the first one um, two of them have won a award, which is back there. And I tell you what. Ooh, fancy. So, yeah. <laughs> so, um, I've been, at, I mean, I've always wanted to be in TV and movies since as far back as I can remember. I went to film school, San Francisco State, got my degree in filmmaking. Um, but then in my late 20s, early 30s, I discovered um, whiskey and mostly scotch. I am a big uh, side Greek scotch lover. Um, and then, you know, when I started this this project about five years ago, I just, I wanted to marry the two things that I like, like my favorite hobby and my favorite part of the job. Mm -hmm. um, so that's where that came about. Uh, we finally um, got some interest this by networks, uh, cable, cable networks. So we went and did a, a crowdfunding campaign, which we finished in February. Uh, mm -hmm. We made our first goal and then we uh, started shooting. And then the next week, COVID lockdown. <laughs> so uh, uh, we thought, well, we can't really take all these people's money and then not finish a project. Right. And then after we realized, obviously, it wasn't going to be a two to three lockdown. It was going to be several months, if not the rest of the year. Uh, oh, back up. Uh, I brought in a partner um, last year, at the end of last year, uh, Philip Dillard, who is the director, you know, the president of uh, the Center for Culinary Culture, and the director of the Cocktail Collection. Um, and that is a nonprofit group that does uh, a lot of events throughout the Los Angeles area, uh, doing food pairings with different um, cocktails or different beverages. Um, so he and I met through the whiskey ones, of course. Um, and he used to be a executive for Nickelodeon. So I thought, you know what, you're the perfect kind of guy to bring along on this because you have contacts, you have knowledge, you have uh, television background. So great. Yeah. So we were working on the project, uh, then COVID hit. So then after a couple of weeks, I said, we got to do a podcast. And he's like, what? We got to do a podcast. We can't leave our audience hanging. We just collected money. Right. So um, Spirits of Whiskey was born. And the ironic thing about Spirits of Whiskey is it's one of, it's Spirit of Whiskey was one of the names of one of the renditions of my whiskey shows. Uh, the reason for spirits of whiskey is because we interview all kinds of people that are the spirit of whiskey. Um, you know, so uh, the, the spirits are the people that we interview, basically. And whiskey is spirit. So, you know. We'll ah, that's clever. So, <laughs> so that's, well, did I answer that question? Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, a little bit. Yeah, for the most part. Yeah, how you got started, and okay. um, yeah, that's how the podcast came about, and that's how you came up with the name. Perfect. Got it. All right, and so what is it about being a certified bartender, bourbon steward, and TV producer that sparks so much joy for you? Um, well, it, it goes back to putting all the things that I like together, and I didn't actually get sort of, I kind of backwards, I didn't get certified as a bartender until probably six years ago. Mm -hmm. um, 
because you know most people do bartending first but i've been doing payment um for 20 years or so and i was kind of getting burnout after freelance after production after production and so i said you know i'm gonna certify as a bartender and that way i could start working on my own projects um mm -hmm. so i kind of did it back but also during that process i met even more people that are whiskey and so just putting it all together is is really fun and mm -hmm. i know this is horrible to say but i've really enjoyed this time off during COVID. <laughs> um it's terrible it's a terrible thing uh but it, it had, we, we actually were able to finish the pilot um last month when things reopened so we're now in post and we're currently uh, editing our next uh camp what is it not fund yeah fundraising campaign video so that we can get funds to do the post-production and uh, finally get it to market so. oh good well that's so exciting you're making progress yeah i love that all right so um you know, I think we often, this sounds really weird, but as drinkers, <laughs> you know, we're, we're often like graduating to embrace whiskey, whiskey right. and scotch, because it's, it's a harsher drink, right? right. It's a harsher um, spirit. Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> so how can someone go about, you know, discovering which type of whiskey is, you know, right for them? That, I, I love that question because yeah. one of the things that, uh, you know, Philip and I love doing, especially Philip, he, that's what he does for a living is have these tastings, is um, I would go to a tasting if it's available. Um, right now, there's a bunch of virtual, in fact, I'm doing a virtual tasting, I'm participating in a virtual tasting tonight uh, with Delmore and the LA Scotch Club. Um, I've been a member of the LA Scotch Club for, I don't know, five, six, seven, something like that. Um, mm -hmm. and that's one of like four different uh, Scotch whiskey clubs that I'm involved in in the area. Um, so right now they've moved everything to online. So if you're interested in learning about if you think you might like it, uh, you know, participate in any of the online tastings. So, you know, you, you charge a fee just for the whiskey to be sent to you and they'll send you samples and they'll talk about each one. They'll, they'll bring you through um, the nosing, the tasting. Uh, and it's really interesting. I mean, if you, if you already know from past experience that say you don't like the peated ones, the really heavily smoky flavor ones that are mm -hmm. out of the island of Isla, off the southern, southern sorry, west coast of Scotland, which I'm not a fan of. Um, but most of my friends at the Scotch Club love it. In fact, we have a giant event every year called the Peat Meet, where everything is peated. I go for the dinner because they also barbecue with it, which that is amazing. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, so if you if you go to any of these tastings, then you you can kind of go through a range. Like tonight. I think we're going through six different expressions from Dalmore and you kind of find like which, which thing you're more prone to. Like I, I like the one from the Bayside region of Scotland because um, mm -hmm. they're more caramely, more vanilla um, and, but they're not sweet. Like mm -hmm. I like the scotch better than like bourbon because bourbon to me is um, the corn, the, the, not the right, the sweet, my palate. but um, no, I've learned all of this from going to take Oh, I love that. Yeah. And so are the tastings that are virtual right now, are they delivering the... Yeah, the so I just, oh. actually, just five minutes before you called me, uh, my delivery came for tonight's tasting, so... Oh, fantastic um, timing. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, that's definitely a good tip. I'll have to, I'll have to try that out. Um, all right. And would you mind sharing with us how quarantine has changed the way First Real Entertainment and the Center of uh, Culinary Culture operates? Yes. Okay. So for, for the first real entertainment part, which is my next part, um, you know, obviously we were in the middle of filming and we had mm -hmm. to stop. Uh, so we went from doing a uh, video you know, uh, with a big crew, not but a size crew, to uh, recording from home. And Philip is recording from home, doing all the editing stuff here instead of to the office. Um, for Philip, it's a bigger change. Um, all of his stuff was in public. It was all events. He would do events a week. Um, wow. uh, and several of those would be large tickets. So they would be at different restaurants and bars across the, the, the city. Um, and they also had a, uh, the, um, the museum, uh, the collection, the, uh, collection, which was located in uh, Pedro. And they were already moving. It. They had already packed it up in central Los Angeles. This way, but mm -hmm. more local for you know, Angelinos to get to, and then COVID happened, breaks on that. So right now, there's 
no displayed museum. Um, so, you know, so he's had from uh, live events to now they're doing all of their content on video and putting it there. Um, but they're doing a lot of tea shows and he's also <laughs> other people's um, food and beverage shows to all be put through the uh, so that they can turn the, the income profit so that when this is all over, we still have a place to go and reflection and have dinners and, and right. Right. right, understood. Yeah, you know, everyone's had to pivot, huh? Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, you know, our last big question, you know, how can everyone at home, you know, who's tuning in support your productions and um, Phillips nonprofit so we can all have whiskey together when quarantine is over? Yes. Uh, whiskey together is very important. Um, <laughs> so uh, once we get the show going, um, we plan to have the end is supposed to be a big party scene at the end where we bring all the locals for wherever, whatever, and sharing it with everybody. Um, and it's, oh, sorry, the show, the show, the show's name is called Whiskey, A Chef's Journey. And we have Chef Leonard, who one season two of the taste, is our host. And she travels uh, around America and the that's it, available, um, uh, going to different uh, it's the culinary and um, beverage culture of each place. She, from the people she meets and the drinks that she has and the food that she, she comes up with to highlight uh, that particular. So at the end, it's supposed to be a big party. Mm -hmm. The pilot, it's turned into an, it may have to say that. Mm -hmm. and go here, whatever um but that would be something that we all do together if the show goes so that would be great um mm -hmm. let's get the show out go to first wheel entertainment that's one s t r e e dot com um mm -hmm. and we'll have more information about um our uh, post production that's coming out next week mm -hmm. and also you can go to facebook we're on facebook at a whiskey journey with an e whiskey with an e and also and twitter and then for philip he is um also on facebook and yeah you can go to him and subscribe if you go to our uh, website uh www.spiritsofwhiskey.com at the very bottom it will show you all 10 platforms that will podcast and subscribe to our newsletter to get you know updates weekly twice a month updates on everything um, that will include how to um, to the campaign. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you go to Philip's page for the culture of culinary, uh, the center of culinary culture for the cocktail uh, collection, you can mm -hmm. uh, sign up there list as well and or. Okay, that's great. So we're going to obviously post this on our Instagram and our Facebook. So if you want to comment with um, any of those, um, you know, I guess call to actions, like please Great. do. Sure. I know that there are a couple of them. Just want to make sure that we don't miss anything. Right. All right. Okay. Well, this was great, Carrie. Well, thank you so much for your time today. You know, we're really pulling for you guys and, you know, can't wait for the show to come out too. Thank you. Um, thank you. So, yeah, you're welcome. It's lovely meeting you. You know, stay safe out there and, um, you know, let us know what else we can do to support. Great, thank you. And I, I just want to say, I think it's really great that you do this for the community every week. When Zach, comes up, I'm like, oh, that's really, really smart, actually. And, <laughs> and so, I wanted to thank you for doing something like this. I think that's great. Uh, you're so welcome. Whatever little thing I can do to help, I'm happy to do it. So, um, you know, I hope that this will give you a little boost there. You too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks, Carrie. Enjoy your Friday, and uh, and then we'll see you soon. I hope. All right. Thank you. All right. Thanks, thanks, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. Bye.